Don't you just feel different today? Gulcher said to Jock. I, I don't know, Jock rumbled. Bottled up in here, I don't, I don't know how I feel. Troy Gulcher looked up at the clock and the aluminum mesh on the wall of the lockup. They even try to cage time, he liked to say. The guards for Secure Max Cell Block 5, a New Jersey high security penal institution, were most of the time behind the glass of the bulletproof booths, looking down on the cell block from the second floor tier. Gulter could see their silhouettes up there, but you, you couldn't see their faces most of the time, what with the light being behind them, like being watched by ghosts. Jock, a tall blonde man with a heavy jaw and Aryan army tattoos, real name Rudolf Simpson, and Gulcher, a stocky, dark man with a short black beard, heavy black brows. Both convicts were in coveralls, prison yellow, standing by the ping pong table, just toying with the paddles. Jock bounced the ball under the paddle, but didn't try to serve it. It was almost lights out. Pretty soon the guards would tell them through the public address to put the paddle on table and go back to their cells. It being Monday, three guards would come to each cell, unlock them one at a time, doing a quick check to see if anybody had managed to make some pruno or tucked away some other contraband. Same old, same old for almost a year now. No movement on getting Gulcher transferred to state medium security, where it was so much easier, roomier, a man could hustle some drugs. You shouldn't have busted up that security guard's shins, his court-appointed lady lawyer had told him. Snooty fucking bitch. Like to get her alone once he was out. Have her out of that pants suit, lickety split. Restless, nervous. How about serving that fucking ball there, Jock? Jock shrugged and served, and they batted it listlessly back and forth till it bounced from the table and Jock went to chase it down. Gulcher waited tensely. Gulcher was feeling more than his usual restlessness. Something in the air was about to bust open like a lightning storm. Ought to try to explain to Jock again, but it was hard to explain the hunches he got. Gulcher and Jock had become allies since the Jersey guys came into the cell block, Cellini and Deloro, trying to throw their weight around. When you get out, this tang's going to get you. You don't give me what we want in here, Cellini said. Cigarettes, whatever we want. This tang. Gulcher doubted that fat bastard Cellini was really a made man, and if he was, he'd probably have had a better lawyer. Doing any time to speak of just for stealing a car with a jail so crowded meant you had a bad lawyer. It was strange Cellini had ended up in high security for stealing cars. Maybe it was his record. Maybe he pissed off the cops or maybe he was a plant, made a deal with the warden to catch the others with contraband. You really don't feel something like in the air? Gulcher asked softly as Jock came back with a ping pong ball. I don't know, Troy. Hey, it could be. I, I do feel funny. Jock paused, bounced the ball on the table. It could be they put something in the dinner, one of them experiments they do in prisoners. Jock was prone to paranoia. Craziness in your block, boys, was one of the things you put up with. Gulcher sighed and glanced up at the clock again. Don't wait, a voice whispered. Don't waste what? The voice faded before it quite finished. What'd you say? Gulcher asked, looking sharply at Jock. Didn't say nothing. Jock said, returning the look, eyes narrowed. I thought I heard a... Long ago, you called my name. The wave has risen. Now you can hear my reply. Reach out. Use the red vitality. Don't wait. There it was again, a whispering. Something about calling a name, a wave, risen, a red vitality. Someone whispering and not Jock. But no one else was standing close enough, just the two of them standing at the ping pong table. Uh, whose voice was that? Uh, sounded like it was coming from right behind him. Gulcher looked, nobody there. Whispering, but what was the voice saying? Couldn't quite make it out. You didn't hear somebody whispering, Gulcher asked. Jock frowned at him. You fucking with me? Because I, I don't like that. The wave rises. Let it guide you. Was that what it was saying? The wave rises. Let it guide you. And there was a feeling with it. The whispering went uh, with a rise in that strange, restless feeling, like years ago. He'd never forgotten it. It started with that Aleister Crowley book he'd got as a teen from that crazy stoned old friend of his pop. Old dude with the long white hair used to run the Charlie Manson. That strange feeling Gulcher got when he'd read the book. Not understanding all of it, but when he'd drawn the diagrams and called the names of power listed in magic and theory and practice, Nothing definite had happened that night, years before, but just the feeling that something unusual was in the air, a tingling that seemed to want to talk to you. 
but nothing that you could actually see. The next morning, 5 a.m., his father had got himself paralyzed, slid his Harley under a truck, which was a good thing for his son, a blessing, as the, that old drunk Father Lawrence liked to say, because it meant no more beatings from the old man and because it meant that eventually Gulcher could get his pop alone with the old son of a bitch stuck in his bed, take his time ending the old prick's life, smothering him slow, which Gulcher did within six months of the accident. Now in Secure Max Cell Block 5, the feeling grew and grew in his chest as the whispering got louder and louder, a good feeling, strong, like when he did Dexedrine to get through a night of jacking trucks, getting them over the pen border. You got to rise, a sensation of power inside, like nobody could sneak upon you, nobody could bust you, nobody could stand in your way. Another voice from nowhere, but oh, this was the guards talking for the PA. Okay, guests of the state, back to your cells for inspection. Chop, chop. Gulcher tossed the ping-pong battle onto the table, and they walked back to the cells, each just a little bigger than a motel bathroom. Usually you had to share, but here in Securimax, Jock and Gulcher each had a cell side by side. The cell doors were open, but they'd be automatically closed in a few minutes once the cons were inside. The whispering again, the wave rises. No longer is it held back. Open, be guided. And something else lost in the echoes of Cellini and the other Jennies shouting at one another from their cells. Shut up so I can hear, Gulcher muttered. What exactly was the whispering telling him to do? And why was the light going purple in here? Was he having a stroke or, or what? Maybe he should ask to go to the infirmary. You know, fat chance, not something they granted without his being practically dead. He stepped into his cell, found the plastic comb. The guards worked hard on not giving him anything he could use as a weapon on somebody else or yourself. Toothbrushes were short and soft. There were no springs on the bed, no toilet seats, and on and on. But he'd been working on the end spine of this comb, scraping it against a rough spot on the metal frame of the door, and he had it pretty sharp. It wasn't much of a weapon. He hadn't been sure what was going, he was going to do with it till now. Don't waste any time, the whispering said. Gulcher could hear it more clearly now. The wave is rising. It won't continue forever. Do it. He sat on the bunk and took the spiky plastic end spine of the comb and bent it a little outward from the other spines, uh, gritted his teeth, and jammed it into his wrist. It took a moment to punch through. Had to press hard. And then he sucked air through his teeth as pain jolted through his wrist and blood squirted and uh, uh, red so dark it was almost inky. He hadn't hit anything major, just a bunch of smaller vessels, but it was more than enough blood for his purpose. He yanked out the plastic spine, then climbed in close to the wall over his cot, dipped the index finger of his other hand into the blood on his wrist, and started drawing, just letting the feeling guide him. Like the whispering said, it felt good to do that, and he always did what felt good.